We've seen fire and we've seen rain. We've seen sunny days that we thought would never end. We've seen lonely times when we could not find a friend. Bet you never thought you'd see now and then again. Welcome once again to Tom's Head Parade. Uh, how about another now and then, shall we? I know I just brought you a now and then recently, but uh, and then honestly, that's the one thing that I don't like about my now and thens is that they tend to come in clusters. You know, I'll go three or four months without any now and thens at all, and then I'll bring three or four to you within a month. Uh, I, I'm trying to space them out a little bit at least. Uh, you know, I don't want to give you like a whole week's worth. I thought about doing that, but I didn't want to overload you. But you know, honestly, the truth about this is that. You can't control when the inspiration for something comes. You know, you gotta grab it when it hits, because uh, it may not hit for another two or three months. Uh, yeah, that's what happened was, is a bunch of albums came out at the same time, and I was kind of in the zone. I sat down and listened to one, wrote out the notes for that one, and the juices kept on flowing, so I figure, you know, hang on to the, uh, grab the bull by the horns when it's there to be grabbed. I guess it's the best uh, simile I can come up with. But anyway. Now and Then, for those of you who don't know, is my regularly irregular feature in which I talk about two albums by the same artist, their newest release as well as one from their back catalog. The subject of today's Now and Then is legendary American singer-songwriter James Taylor, and for now we're going to be talking about American Standard, his newest release, his 20th album. Now of course James Taylor needs no introduction at all. He is one of the all-time best voices in American pop music, a voice that he still has at age 72, by the way. He hasn't lost a bit of what he's got. And in my opinion, honestly, he's one of those artists that you really can't hate. Honestly, in my, if, if you hate James Taylor, you're just wrong, in my opinion, okay? Uh, one of the things that I like about him, uh, one of the reasons that I like him is because my sister was a huge fan of James Taylor. I'm not that big of a fan. I'm not particularly a huge fan. I don't dislike him. But at the same time, I don't go out of my way to pick up his albums. Uh, but this one, it was I, I saw it when it came out, and I was tempted from the start. Uh, but I finally, I just I gave into the temptation uh, a few weeks ago. I had to pick it up. Yes, it's been out since February, but hey, better late than never, right? And on top of everything else, the fact that he was recruited by Charlie Puth for a feature on his most recent album just elevates both artists in my eyes. It simply endears me more to both of them, both Charlie Puth and James Taylor. I mean, let's face it, Charlie has great taste in music, doesn't he? But anyway, perhaps the most surprising thing of all out of this album is that it took this long for James Taylor to do an album of standards. Uh, he did a covers album back in 2008, but it was comprised of pop and rock and folk songs from the 50s and 60s, more recent material than uh, this album is based on. This album contains much older songs, pop standards, and show tunes ranging from the 30s to the 50s, roughly, and it's pretty much exactly what you would expect out of a James Taylor album that's made up of this kind of stuff, but if you ask me, that is only a good thing. That That's a plus all the way. Now this album is almost entirely acoustic and uh, with mostly very mellow and uplifting arrangements, although there are a couple of uh, blues-inspired moments, such as on God Bless the Child, it's one of my favorite standards of all, uh, and in the verses of Sit Down, You Rock in the Boat. Uh, that song is in really interesting because while the verses, verses are slower and slightly bluesy, the tempo picks up significantly for the bouncy chorus, and it, it just makes for a really fun listen, that song. Now, Sit Down, You're Rockin' the Boat uh, is originally from the musical Guys and Dolls, and this album contains a handful of other show tunes, such as The Surrey with the Fringe on Top from Oklahoma, and You've Got to Be Carefully Taught from South Pacific, and as well as some songs that we often forget were originally show tunes, such as Moon River, the absolute classic written by Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer, a dream team of composers if there ever was one, and that song, incidentally, was originally heard in the film Breakfast at Tiffany's. And the rest of the album pretty much is full of great American songbook standards. Uh, my Blue Heaven is the opener, and it's a beautiful, bouncy rendition. That's one of my favorite songs. And since it's followed up by Moon River, which is another one of my all-time favorite standards, that, of course, leaves me with a very, very good first impression of this album, and it makes it hard for me not to completely enjoy the whole rest of it. Uh, and, you know, the icing on top is, hey, it's James Taylor. Come on. Uh, now, I mentioned a few minutes ago God Bless the Child, which is one of, another one of my favorite old standards, as well as It's Only a Paper Moon and The Nearness of You. I mean, this album is absolutely full of great songs. And uh, one of the less familiar songs to me uh, that I really enjoyed was As Easy as Rolling Off a Log. Uh, another song that's really re great on this album is My Heart Stood Still. That has a beautifully gentle acoustic guitar rhythm that I just loved. 
and I consider that one of the album's finer moments. Uh, so, you know, honestly, I can't stop praising this album, as you can tell. Uh, this album, it may not be one that commands attention or has anything that makes it really stand out, other than James Taylor's voice, as I said. But in this day and age, when some entertainers are all about wowing the audience and grabbing their attention, this is a refreshing change, honestly, if you ask me. Uh, it doesn't have any real surprises. It's just a very, very pleasant listen from one of the most consistently good and enjoyable artists who's still making music today. I mean, you honestly, for, for the, the steady and dependable, I guess you'd say, artists, you can do a whole heck of a lot worse and can't really do a whole lot better than American Standard by James Taylor. But that was now, and this is then, Flag, James Taylor's ninth album released in 1979. And can I say for a minute, I really appreciate the weight that the numbers fall on here. Uh, American Standard was James Taylor's 20th album, released in 2020, and this is his ninth album, released in 1979. Yay, Yay numbers. numbers! Anyway, uh, I chose this album for the then selection mostly by default. It's just about the only other studio album of his that I have on vinyl, besides Sweet Baby James, and that would have been just too obvious a choice if you ask me. I just kind of wanted to have a little fun with this, make this a little bit of an unpredictable video. And I also couldn't resist checking this album out in depth uh, simply out of morbid curiosity because it was one of his less well-received albums. So that obviously had me intrigued right from the start. Uh, now this album has covers of Lennon and McCartney's Day Tripper, as well as the classic pop song Up on the Roof by Carole King and Jerry Goffin, which are both excellent renditions, by the way. And his, actually his version of Up on the Roof uh, was uh, a single of his and is one of the better known songs in his discography. It also has two songs that he wrote for a musical called Working, uh, which was written by Stephen Schwartz. Uh, Millworker and Brother Trucker were those two songs. Uh, both of these songs, they're okay, uh, basically about occupations, after which the songs are titled. Uh, so the lyrics at least give a blue-collar vibe, uh, not unlike, maybe vaguely, kind of like uh, Mellencamp or Springsteen, uh, particularly Brother Trucker, which has a little bit of a country feel to it, naturally, since it's about trucking. But uh, Mill Worker is written from the perspective of the mill worker's wife, which makes it a little bit odd. So, uh, you know, that, that's probably, you know, has to do with probably the context of the song as it is in the musical. So, you know, that, that makes it lose a little bit, uh, you know, just in a standalone version on the album. So that's a little bit odd. Uh, as for the original songs, um, Company Man is a pretty solid opener with uh, a, more of a rock feel. It's probably the most, uh, the most rock song on this album and the most rock that you'll probably hear James Taylor get. Uh, and that actually features Graham Nash on backing vocals. And it's it's a bit of a dig at the corporate side of the record industry. So that makes it a little bit fun, a little bit of a, an indictment against the record industry. Uh, Johnny Comes Back is a song about a woman who keeps leaving from and returning to the protagonist's life so he can support what sounds like her substance abuse problem. So that's kind of a, um, a downer song, a bit of a, a, a serious song, I guess you'd say. I Will Not Lie is a melancholy song that uh, tells the story of a man who knows his friend's lover is unfaithful and possibly has been has been in or has been trying to get into a relationship with the protagonist. So yeah, the album kind of covers some serious issues, I guess you'd say. Uh, Side B opens up with B as You Are, which the title is actually written as the letters B as You Are. Uh, it features backing vocals by Carly Simon, and it's a song with that classic, brightly mellow James Taylor sound. And it seems to be about uh, two people who are trying to make a relationship work, but in the end, they need to be who they really are, regardless of how that might affect that relationship. So that's a good song with a good message. Uh, Rainy Day Man, in a way, it feels like his own self-written version of you got a, You've Got a Friend, uh, the song that he made famous. The song was written by Carole King and Jerry Goffin. And it, it may be unfair to compare that song to uh, You've Got a Friend, since there's no hope of it measuring up. But still, it's a very, very nice song in its own right, honestly. And then we have Chanson Française, which you know how I feel about songs sung in French. Uh, and, and my only problem with that song is that it's so darn short. Uh, curiously, the two songs that I like the least on this album are the final tracks on each side. On side A, we have Is That The Way You Look, which has a classic R&B feel, but the lyrics are very, very repetitive and are just about his reaction to seeing a really good looking woman. Yeah, that's all there is to the song, really. And uh, it's probably a good thing that it's less than two minutes long. So. Uh, and the other track, the album closer, Sleep Come For Me, is much better, but it still it just has something missing. Or maybe I just didn't connect with it. Honestly, maybe that's all it is. Uh, it's basically a prison blues kind of song that about an inpa inmate waiting for his execution. 
it just doesn't seem like a James Taylor sort of song, if you know what I mean. It, it, it's, it's more, it would sound more at home in the catalog of, of somebody like Johnny Cash or Willie Nelson or somebody like that. So that's the only drawback to that song for me. It just didn't feel like James Taylor, even though he wrote it. But yeah, there's, a, there's actually more to enjoy on this album, honestly, I found anyway, than uh, its uh, overall ranking in the James Taylor catalog would suggest. So uh, which album do I like more? Well, it's pretty much no contest. It is going to be American Standard, just because uh, I'm kind of a sucker for cover albums. I, I, I love, you know, good renditions of old songs, and James Taylor does those songs justice. And it's it's just, as I said, it's just packed with several of my favorite old standards of all time. So yeah, I, I it was worth the wait picking up this album. I didn't pick it up for, what did I, four months after it was released? But yeah. It, it was it was very much worth the wait. I really, really enjoyed that album. But honestly, James Taylor would probably really have to screw up an album for me to not like it. So yeah, he's just, as I said, one of the absolute treasures of American music. Fantastic. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at James Taylor now and then. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms? Lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.